Welcome to Microscope Introduction. I'm going to be going over some principles of microscopy. My name is Jim Genoso. I'm with Northern Focus Optical. I am going to show you how to use this microscope, how to maintain it, how to troubleshoot it, and then finally I'm going to go over how to try to get a better result image. Um, behind you I'll utilize the screen here to, for you to see as well what is going on live on the camera. So to begin with, this is a compound microscope. There are many different types of microscopes, but this is the most common. Some are inverted, which are used for tissue culture, and then there are dissecting microscopes, which are used for lower magnification. Basic microscopes have light come from the bottom, go up through a specimen that is mounted very thin in a thin section on a slide with a cover slip and put in between the light volume coming up and then magnified by an objective and up through your eyepieces. And along the way, there's a lot of conditioning that's done to this light and magnifying that's done to this light, which I'll explain. And those are critical areas to keep clean and also critical areas to know how to manipulate certain things on the microscope to get a good image. So we'll go over that as we move along. But I'd like to start out with just a quick overview of some of the components on a standard compound microscope. First of all, the on-off switch. They're in different areas on microscopes, so you'll have to find out where it is on your particular microscope. But as you can see, the intensity will increase or decrease. And that's important to depending upon the type of specimen you're using and how opaque it is or not and also which magnification you're using. As you go higher in magnification, you're gonna need more light. And also, as I'll explain later afterwards, there are different contrast techniques like this one has dark field and phase contrast, which need more light uh, just as a basic principle. So we have the light switch on and off. And somewhere around in this area of the microscope, you're gonna see a knob that rotates like this. And that is, the focus control. It moves the stage up and down, which invariably moves your specimen closer or further away from the objective and allows you to focus sharply on the specimen. And as you can see here, as I move it up and down, we can go in and out of focus. So, and most of the compound microscopes, so I'll go to this type to show you, have the fine focus, which is a fine adjustment outside of course adjustment. You can see how much displacement of the stage the course adjustment does. And this is typically just used on a low magnification objective to kind of get you in the ballpark of your specimen. And then most of your work will be done with the fine focus from here on. There'll be some place along the microscope, either in the back or directly underneath this area, in which you'll find a light bulb, or in this case, on this microscope, an LED. So I'll open this up quickly. Because one of the problems people run into all the time is they'll turn on the light and they'll get in, turn on the on off switch and no light will come through the system. Sometimes your bulb is burned out. In this case, we have a small LED here and it could be also a light bulb here that might need replacement. LEDs typically will not need replacement. If they're not functioning, it's usually something in the circuitry itself and not the LED. As you can see, I'm rotating this little bezel right here, this round thing. And you're noticing the field of view is shrinking down and opening up. What this does is called a field condenser, a field diaphragm. And if you imagine that light coming up as a column, it's shrinking that diameter, larger or smaller. It's an adjustment made to reduce the amount of light going up to minimize stray light going into the optical system. And it's a way to refine your image later on to optimize the light column. For now, it plays an important role in initial setup called color illumination. And that's how we can center that light to the center of our view. As you can see, I'm rotating these little knobs and I'm offsetting that. And it's just an area where these things get put out of whack, kind of. They get out of center and it can affect your image, you'll get a non-homogeneous image. It's kind of like an iris on your eye, it shrinks and opens. It's got a bunch of little mechanical leaves in it. 
Next major component moving up through the light train is this called a condenser. Now what this does is takes that column of light and squeezes it down kind of like an inverted funnel to a very small vertex point hopefully right at where your specimen is at, right at the cell you're inter interested in doing. And as you can see, as I raise it back up, I'm going to get nice and sharp on the focus right here. Now I know that my column of light is comes to a point right about where my specimen plane is. Some people will drop this down to create more contrast. See all this stuff shows up? Sometimes a way to create a false uh, contrasting technique, similar to what we call phase contrast. It's not optically correct, but it does work. This condenser is a bit excessive in size compared to most that you'll see on your scopes. And that's because it has a turret in it, which has different little discs that get into that column of light and manipulate the light in different ways called contrasting techniques. Um, this one in particular has a thing called contrast technique called dark field and we'll get into it and you can see the difference there versus nothing there take just a second for it to adjust its exposure and there's a third technique on here which is called phase contrast but uh, this particular objective does not have that. We have to go to the 40X. And we see different artifacts there. So next area up is the stage. We have two controls over here that control the X axis and the Y axis for real precise movements particularly when we get to higher magnifications. On top of the stage should be some type of a specimen holder. In this case, it's a little spring clipped specimen holder. On the simpler scopes, there are two little spring loaded fingers that just hold it down. The next is the objective turret. And on the objective turret, you see these cylinders that look like this. And they have different colors on the, and numbers on them. And that's all really important stuff. Basically, what these are objectives, and they are the first area of magnification that we have. And the common configurations on a student microscope are a 4x, in this case, then a 10x, a 40x, and then typically, sometimes you'll get this really high one. It's a 100x magnification, and we typically utilize immersion oil along with this and only this objective. Problem is, 40X, very similar in height to the 100X, and a very, probably the most common form of degradation of an image is that the 40X will get some of that oil from use in the 100X accidentally on the tip of that glass. And it's a really small piece of glass there. And uh, you'll get a fate, you kind of a, fuzzy, wavy image, and you'll have to pull this off and clean that frontal lens. If there is a 20X, which I have on here, just for show purposes, is also a very long objective. Rarely do you ever get oil on a 10X or a 4X, and the reason being is they're a shorter distance to each other, and so you typically don't get oil on those unless it's splattered up. Moving up, you can rotate these. It's called the objective turret. Above this, we get into this part we call the head tube. This one in particular has an extra port on it for a camera. Most microscopes you'll have will either have one or two eyepieces. Uh, more advanced ones will have two. Simpler ones will have a single called a monocular microscope head. This is a binocular. And on the end of it, whether you have a single or a double, you'll have one of these called an eyepiece ocular, or just simply an eyepiece. Some of them are focusable. As you can see, they go up and down, and that's to compensate for people that will take their glasses off when they're utilizing the microscope and that their eyes have different powers and they're not 
2020 corrected. I'll go over the procedure on how to what we call parfocalize the system so that if you do take your glasses off, when you look through both eyepieces, both eyes will be in focus at the same time. That's an issue we have often is person will need to take their glasses off. These are setting properly, particularly in a binocular microscope. It's not an issue on a monocular, which means one eyepiece. Because if you take your glasses off, you're only using typically your dominant eye. But on a binocular, often a person will take their glasses off, look through their dominant eye. It'll be a nice focus, but their left eye will be fuzzy and hazy and they can't seem to balance one side or the other. And there's a process called parfocalizing the system, which incorporates setting these right so that whether you have glasses on or not, when you focus on a high power objective, you should be able to go through the others without refocusing much on the specimen. Okay, so those are the basic components of the microscope.